What's wrong with this mix? You might think the guitars are too quiet, but it's not that simple. Keep watching to find out the real answer. Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to fit rhythm guitars into a mix. There are two common ways that people mess this up. They either have guitars that are way too loud and eat up the mix, or they're too soft and lack definition. Mixing guitars is a challenge for engineers because they're a very full range instrument. A typical distorted guitar will range from here all the way to here. Since they take up so much space, it's easy for them to dominate everything else in the mix. There are two steps that you can take to get a better guitar sound. Get the right tone and mix around it. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's get right into it. The first step is to check out the guitar tracks. One thing that can instantly throw off a guitar sound is bad editing. If the transients don't line up, there's not much that can be done in the mix. Make sure to take your time getting the right takes and that the editing is clean. The second thing to nail is the tone. The two most important parts of a guitar tone is the gain and the presence. Too much gain will eat up the note definition, and while it might make it sound awesome in solo, it's gonna get lost in the mix. If your guitars sound like this, you gotta dial back the gain. Once the gain is set, Adjust the presence. Presence is the higher frequencies in a guitar tone. This area is super important for getting the guitar to cut through a mix. A guitar tone lacking presence is going to sound dull, and too much presence is going to sound harsh. There's a fine line in between where the tone will sound just right. Gain and presence work in tandem, so as you change one, you'll need to adjust the other. If you can't nail the tone with these two settings, it might be time to switch the speakers. One awesome part of a modern production is the ability to use impulse responses. Tools like this allow you to switch the cabinet in your DAW. Check out how much this tone changes just by adjusting the impulse response. When a sound isn't working in the mix, it's often faster to just change the sound altogether rather than trying to adjust one that isn't working. This goes for drum samples, guitar impulse responses, vocal compressors, basically anything that has a critical role in your mix. By changing the impulse response, this guitar is way closer to the end goal. Watch till the end to find out how you can use these impulse responses in your own mixes. Have you gone down a rabbit hole dialing in the wrong sound? Let me know in the comments below. Now that the guitar sounds awesome, let's fit it into the mix. Start by filtering out the extreme high and low end of the guitar. Everything down here is just rumble. And everything up here is just fizzy white noise. Great, now it's time to make some decisions about the mid-range. Here's a quick way to diagnose your guitar EQ. Bring the guitar volume up and pay attention to the instruments it masks. Then bring the volume down to see what elements cover up the guitars. When the guitars were too loud, they were burying the snare and the mid-range of the bass. When the guitars were too low, I was hearing the cymbals and kick covering it up. Now that we've diagnosed the issues, let's make a few EQ moves. The high end of the bass is peaking around here, so let's cut that on the guitar track. The drum transients are up here, so let's do a high shelf boost. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. The last move I'm going to make is to sidechain the snare fundamental to the guitar track. This is a great way to make the snare punch, but it has to be subtle. If the guitar has too much movement, it's going to get weird. Awesome. This guitar is cutting through the mix without masking any of the other instruments. It wasn't a problem in this mix, but if your drums or bass have a lot of mid-range around the 500Hz area, it may need to be reduced. Overheads, rooms, bass, and any other mix element that plays consistently throughout the song can easily mask your guitar tone. It's usually a good idea to cut the mid-range on these tracks rather than boosting it on the guitar. I'll do a mid-range boost on the drums and bass so you can see what I mean. Keep this in mind when you're struggling with a mix. The issues in your guitar sound may not be coming from your guitar tracks. Let's recap. We made sure the guitars were edited correctly and the tone was dialed in. We switched the impulse response to get the right frequency response for the song. Then we EQ'd the guitar to make sure that it didn't mask the other mix elements. And that's it. Getting guitars to sit in the mix is a balancing act for any engineer. This gets even more complicated when vocals come into play. Make sure you pay attention to the way that every new track affects the existing ones. A great mix is a balanced one, so don't let any one element hide the rest of the mix. If you want to try the impulse responses we used in this video, check out Conquer All Volume 5. This pack features over 150 impulse responses created with some of the most legendary speaker, cabinet, mic, preamp, and power amp combinations. Check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.